Hey everybody, Joe Bory from Single Play Retro Gaming, and today I got a really big box in the mail. Let's open it up together. All right, so for anybody who's been following my journey in trying to get a complete Famicom game collection, I am currently up to uh, over 650 unique loose Famicom cartridges out of a total of 1,051 total released Famicom games. And, like I said, I'm going for a complete loose cartridge set. Now, recently I've been going through my closet and just kind of trying to clean stuff out, and I found a box. And within that box was a massive set of completely unplayed Magic the Gathering cards. And I once was a Magic the Gathering fan, stopped playing a very long time ago. Um, I also used to work with the creators of Magic the Gathering, which means that every time I would go to their office and visit them, I would come home with a booster box full of cards around the M11 slash, um, what was the uh, new Phyrexia, kind of that period. And so I had a ton of cards from that period that had literally just been opened, sorted, put away in a box, never played. So I traded them in. Um, and my thought was, why not trade in that collection of stuff that I won't use to further the collection of stuff that I'm actually working towards and trying to finish off my Famicom collection. So the first box of stuff that came from trading off those magic cards is right here. And I thought, what better way to first go through this box than along with you guys. So if you have uh, watched any of my other Famicom Pickups videos, uh, the format is basically, I'm going to go through some of these games I'm going to know just off the top of my head. Some of them I'm not. Some of them I'm going to need to look up while we're speaking here. And we'll see. Just a moment. Being noisy. <laughs> And we'll just kind of play that by ear and see how it goes. Um, all right. I got my computer here that I might be able to look something up if I need information. Now, first of all, I hate packing peanuts. These things get everywhere. Uh, I'll clean up later. All right. <laughs> These things get everywhere. All right, so, you know what? We are covering the floor. Oh, packing peanuts, you're gonna be fun to clean up later. Yay! I have to take a picture of that, splice it in. Okay, so, this may end up being a couple of videos because this is more Famicom games than I can pick up in a single go. <laughs> All right, let's open that up. You know what? We're going to grab this camera here. Yep, that's quite the selection. And quite the mess on the floor. All right. So let's start out here. Aha. All right, very first one I'm going to pull out of the box here is... Lord of King. So this is actually uh, a Steinax in the U.S. Released in Japan under the very strange and... I can't decide if it's a generic name or not. Lord of King. <laughs> but that is a Steinax for the Famicom. Side, if you haven't played it, side-scrolling, hack and slash. Um, kind of a little like a Rastan if you've seen that game. All right, next one out of the box here is something from Namco. So let's see what, what I'm looking at here. All right, that cut right there was because it took me a surprisingly long time to find any information about this game here. But this is Heisei Tensai Bakaban, which appears to be 
a side-scrolling platformer. Um, probably based on a manga or anime or something. Looks like it's got pretty solid animation for a Famicom game. Um, looks like it actually could be pretty fun. So, I kind of expect a pretty decent game out of Namco, and it'll be a fun one to try. All right. Next thing we're going to find here is... What's this? Oh, arcade classic Choplifter. So, an American game, but um, it is, you know, rescuing people with a helicopter or arcade classic. This is the Famicom port. I believe the Nintendo got a port as well. Probably the same port. This guy is Volgard 2. So, I believe this is a, uh, like a top-down shooter. Uh, some kind of a, some type, kind of a um, shoot em up I believe it's a top-down one. Oops. So apparently, <laughs> I accidentally ordered a second copy of Choplifter. Good thing these are like a dollar a piece. All right, now go in the trade box. <laughs> All right, let's see, what have we got here? Um, I think this is Parasol something. Let me look this guy up. So we got Famicom Parasol Henby. Yep, that looks right. Parasol Henby. What is this? Side scroller. Another side scrolling platformer. YouTube. Stop giving me ads. All right. Now we're waiting for the YouTube ads. Let's see who makes this. Apoc. Yeah, they they were reasonably hit and miss, but they had some pretty decent games. So, really, gonna make me watch two ads? Here we go. All right. Ooh. So it looks like a two D side scrolling platformer where you can pull out an umbrella to kind of float down slower. Looks like it's going to have pretty reasonable platforming and decent controls. So, yeah, that should be fun to take a look at. All right, let's see. I'm here at the Famicom port of Afterburner. So, absolute Sega arcade classic. Um, again, during this era, it was always so interesting to see Sega games pop up on a Nintendo console. But yeah, Afterburner. Um, I believe, oh yeah, I do. I have the NES version of this as well. I don't think I've actually ever played it. I should, at one of these points, do a comparison of the NES, Famicom, uh, Master System, and Genesis versions of Afterburner. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, what are we looking at here? Another one from APOC. And this is... Uh, let's see what we're looking at here. This guy is Famicom. Dai Miro Make You No Tatsujin. A first person dungeon exploration game. The player controls an archaeologist tasked with the goal of finding nine pieces of treasure and locating the exit before running out of hearts. Fun! I have to check that guy out. Do I have any screenshots? Let's see. No, yeah, looks like a fairly traditional old school dungeon crawler. Fun! Alright. Looking at next here. Ah, Zoids. I believe all of the Famicom Zoids games were uh, real time strategy. So I we'll have to see if this is the same as its as its brethren that I have over there on the shelf. But I believe it is. Ah, so this is actually a better shaped copy of a game that I already own. This one is called Supari Wars. Um, which is basically, um, it's, it's Risk meets West Side Story. It is, uh, or River City Ransom turned into a 
a world map based strategy game risk style so you have like street gang members and you are moving them from environment to environment in order to beef up you know that neighborhood so that you can fight off the opponents now what's interesting about it is is when i describe it like risk risk was all just a, based on a die roll but in this when you take two uh neighborhoods and fight them against each other it actually goes into sort of like a simplified top-down beat-em-up scenario which um, makes for a pretty fun little game. Now, a while back I looked and nobody had ever done an English translation for this game. And so um, one reason I wanted to get a better quality copy of this one for my collection is I am actually working on an English translation for this one. I have the whole interface translated um, and I'm working right now on just the story elements. Um, it's slow going because I barely speak any, or read any Japanese. I can get just enough to get by on the interface and everything. But um, I do have a version right now that is totally playable in English in multiplayer. And um, yeah, I'm hoping to put that out there pretty soon so other people can give it a try. Fun game. Ah. Little Lord Fauntleroy. So this is based on a 80s Japanese cartoon film or animated film, but I don't actually know what kind of game they made out of it. Shokuji CD is apparently the Japanese name for it. And it looks like, it looks like Earthbound oddly enough. Um, let's see. Shokuji CD Famicom. Now I'm not seeing a lot for uh, for screenshots, but what I can see has sort of an Earthboundish vibe to it. Cool. All right. Here we are looking at IREM number six. Easiest way to find this would be IREM. Is it's this? This isn't Spelunker 2, is it? This might be Spelunker 2. Um, let me look at that. See if that's what I'm looking at. If it is, it is another one of those games that I actually already had on the shelf, but it ended up on here anyway. It is totally Spelunker 2. All right. So if you played the first Spelunker, you know that that is a platformer where you are basically the world's weakest hero. And in fact, the modern remakes advertise themselves that way you have this tiny little jump and if you fall just a little bit too far you die and it's super silly i actually like spelunker but it is super silly spelunker 2 oddly enough reminds me more of like gilligan's island for the nes where you're kind of like on a semi-open world and you have to kind of find your way through this open world map but then with a bit of um you know uh, I, 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 I hate to use the term Metroidvania for something as simple as Spelunker 2, but kind of this, you need to find this item and then take it here and use it in order to open a new path. Well, me Metroid-ish. Um, but yeah, Spelunker 2. All right. Here we got F1 Circus, um, one of Nichibutsu's uh, racers. Um, I think I brought this up on the last video, but I love that Nichibutsu numbered every one of their releases. So this is Nichibutsu number 11. This guy here, we are looking at something, something odd from Pony Canyon. Pony Canyon is another one of those companies where you never quite know the quality of what you're going to get from them. Some of it is kind of nonsense and then some of it's pretty wonderful um so let's see what they're giving me here shogi they're giving me shogi tanigawa koji no shogi shinan 2 it is a a shogi game um the guy on the front most likely given that it has his name on it and it's number two in the series he's probably like a famous shogi player that licensed it ah ultraman club three so 
Ultraman, I think, is one of those series where each game was kind of in a different genre. So let me look real quick before I say anything and make sure this is actually the side-scroller I think it is. Um, it is not. Look at that. It is a RPG with a combat system that actually looks like it was ripped directly out of the original Final Fantasy. Funny. All right. I'm going to have to check that one out, see if it's any good. Tiger Heli. I think most people who grew up with the NES are familiar with this one. Um, so this is one of those cases of, I was mentioning earlier, Pony Canyon's wavering quality. Um, great arcade game. Eh, not the best 8-bit port. But... Um, I believe the Famicom one is the same one we got in the U.S. for the NES. This, this is Daikaiju something. <laughs> and it appears to be kind of a cartoonish Godzilla looking thing. Let's see, Famicom, Deco, Daikaiju. Daikaiju Deboras. Let's see. Wait, is this like Godzilla Tower Defense? What am I looking at here? I don't know. It's a real-time strategy. It is a real-time strategy where it appears that you play as the military fending off the giant monster attack. Cool. All right, we got Captain Subasa 2. Captain Subasa being kind of a story-driven soccer simulator series. And oh, this is the second in that series. I believe it's also based on an anime or a manga and pretty popular. Um, oh, another one where I've just upgraded my cart quality and my old cart can now be a great like gift or loaner cart to people. Motomo Abadai Deka. If you've been following my channel, you are familiar with this one. It's a Rolling Thunder style shooter based on a 80s Japanese cop show. Made a recommendation for that one a while back. Still stick to it. We got F1 Hero 2. Yet another, I believe these are like pole position style racing games. Ah, is this Castle Quest or Castle Excellent? This is Castle Quest. Yes. So, Castle Quest was released in the U.S. as Castle Quest. Um, I believe Castle Quest and Castle Excellent are the same game, um, released under two different names on the Famicom. Um, and it's, well, it's interesting. It's a game that I want to like more than I actually like because it is um, it's kind of an early Metroidvania type open world, find keys to open doors, find items, light you to new places. Each room is kind of its own puzzle. Almost feels, uh, I want to say it feels almost like an old uh, British microcomputer Metroidvania, like a Jet Set Willy type thing. But it's... Um, it's not great, despite all of that. The jump is floaty and weird. Um, the game is incredibly difficult, and you can play for a very long time only to use your things in the wrong order and end up locking yourself out from ever completing the game. There are plenty of ways to kill your own progression on this. Now, it was so difficult that the original Japanese version, they gave you three lives, I believe you could actually use the, the save game system like that plugged into the Famicom to save it, but it only gave you three lives. The American version didn't have the save game, so they just give you 50 lives. Okay, kind of an oddity. <laughs> oh man. Here's one that's a little bit rarer for its time. Um, Utsurun Des. So it's basically, I am Utsurun. So let's see, let me remind myself of exactly what game this is. I believe it's a side-scrolling platformer of some sort. 
It is most definitely a side-scrolling platformer of some sort. Um, and it actually has some really intriguing... Uh, the thing that caught my eye with this one is some really intriguing character designs that are like full screen, feel like hand drawn, like like with crayon by kids, but hand drawn uh, characters that are like, I don't know if they're bosses or what, but definitely um, this, this game is on the weird side. It's definitely uh, targeted for little kids, but um, yeah, in many ways, graphically, it felt to me like Tom and Jerry on the NES, which I was always really impressed by how big they were able to make the bosses um, in that game. So, interested to see if it lives up to what I think it might be. <laughs> ah. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Hillsfar. We got this one in the U.S. as well. Um, the AD&D series uh, is, I would say, one of, when I talk about good and bad games from Pony Canyon, the AD&D series is one of their more interesting sets of games, um, better quality than a lot of the stuff you saw out of them. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break from Famicom here because I did throw in a couple of extra non-Famicom stuff. Um, and really quickly gloss through these. We've got a original Japanese copy of Final Fantasy VII. Um, this game needs no introduction. You know what Final Fantasy VII is. And here it is. It, what, one thing that's interesting is the Japanese was just a white cover with the logo. In America, we stock concept art and stuff on the cover. But in Japan, they didn't need to. Everybody knows what Final Fantasy is over there. So, logo on the white cover worked, worked for them. Second one on here is uh, the... Uh, it's a spinoff of the Shin Megami Tensei series from Atlas called... Uh, Soul Hackers for the Sega Saturn. Ooh, I'm hearing a rattle. Oh, I'm hearing a rattle because it has a collectible trading card for the Shin Megami Tensei trading card game inside. Cool. It's a Siegfried card. Alright. Then we've got... Shin Megami Tensei 2. You can see I'm a bit of a, a Shin Megami Tensei, or as the Japanese call it, Mega Ten fan. We've got Lady Stalker, which I believe is a um, action RPG that kind of has a mana feel to it. Um, from Climax Entertainment, which, I mean, unless there was multiple companies with that name, are the guys who did Shining Force, so... This should be interesting to take a look at. All right, and then we have... Mm. Might as well just pull all three of these in one go. Because these are Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6. So, um... I should have the Super Famicom copies of these. These guys go crazy cheap. A um, couple dollars a piece at most to get a decent copy of the original uh, Super Famicom versions of the Final Fantasy games because they sold so well over there. And what are we looking at here is something from Asmic. And that's... Is that what? The logo is almost unreadable. <laughs> Let's see, that doesn't look right. Asmic, Super Famicom. Oh, here we go. SHVC LN. Lennis. Yeah, good luck getting Lennis from that logo. That is unreadable. So what is this? Another RPG of some... Oh, this is Paladin's Quest. U.S., we got this game as Paladin's Quest. Japan, it was called Linus. Here we have a game based on the 3x3 Eyes anime series. 
or 3x3. I don't know how people say that. You tell me. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, yeah, this one is like a side scrolling beat em up. Um, really solid animation in this guy. Uh, kind of interested to check it out. Oh, and then if I'm getting all the Final Fantasies, got to add Mystic Quest. Come on. It's not that bad. <laughs> all right. So. Back to the Famicom finds here. Here we have a Capcom baseball game. Let's see which one that is real quick. So this one, here's a Famicom Capcom baseball. Pro Yuku Satsujin Jiken. Is that what I'm looking at? No, it's not. I'm looking at Mizushima Shinji no Dai Koshien. Did that get released here? Mizushima Shinji no Dai Koshien Famicom. Looks like no. Looks like this was never released here. So, um, yeah, the so baseball is huge in Japan. And because of that, um, the Famicom got a ton of baseball games. In fact, I'm currently in the process of sorting five more baseball games into my sports collection over here. And now six, including this Capcom one. <laughs> um, they did a lot. They really liked their baseball. Uh, Paris Dakar Rally. So this guy is a racer. Um, I would assume behind the car, almost all of these are behind the car, but let's see. Famicom. No, this is a top down. Oh, whoa. Nope, this is not like the others. This switches back and forth between a spy hunter top down point of view and a side scrolling city connection style point of view. This should be intriguing. I look forward to checking that one out. Eight Eyes, blatant Castlevania 2 knockoff. We got this one in the US. Ah, Akuma no something. <laughs> uh, this is the Uninvited, the Japanese version of the Uninvited. I love The Uninvited. In fact, um, when I was first learning how to build video games, uh, The Uninvited was kind of my first inspiration. Um, and I would do like text-based adventure games on the TI-94A little uh, computer that hooked to a black and white TV that um, it was just totally trying to recreate the first few minutes of Uninvited in a text-based adventure form. So, yeah, love that one. All right, this one I believe I have to look up the name again, but in Japan it was Dragon Unit. This one came out in the U.S. as Dragon was part of the name. Let's see, Famicom Dragon Unit. From Athena, Castle of Dragon. We got this one in the U.S. as Castle of Dragon. Side scrolling. Uh, Kind of a, not really a platformer, not really a beat em up, pack and slash, just, um, yeah, just uh, almost like a side scrolling fighter almost. Hyper Olympics, I believe this one is like sports mini games from Konami. Ooh, that one is pretty sun, uh, sun faded some point I'll probably find a, a better label on that one, but Tecmo Bowl. You guys probably mostly know Tecmo Bowl. Um, probably the best football game in the 8-bit consoles. Here is a super sun-faded version of King Kong 2. I actually got this one for, uh, for a friend because I have 
my version of King Kong 2 right here. King Kong 2 is a excellent um, kind of, it's not really Zelda-like, but it is a top-down, combat-oriented, character-leveling-type adventure game. Um, it's just not like an open world like Zelda as much as it is like levels that you can travel between and finish in any order. Very strange layout, but I actually really love how King Kong 2 is set up. All right. What am I looking at? I'm looking at... Something from Jalico. Yokai Kurabi? Cut. Is that what that says? Kurabu. Yokai Club! <laughs> huh. That's. Odd being an English name, I would assume they would have used katakana letters to write it. Um, okay, well, Yokai Club is a looks like a side scrolling combat type uh, platformer. So, I mean, initial impressions from screenshots here feel a little bit uh, like an older Shatterhand. Be cool to check out. Namco's Dragon Spirit. So I do not know what this game is. So we will check it out. Oh, it looks like this one actually made it to the NES. I still don't know what it is. Oh, this is the top-down dragon shooter, like Life Force, but you're like a three-headed dragon spitting fireballs. Okay. Pretty cool. Ah. Now we're getting to something that's a little bit harder to get your hands on. New York Yankees. This was released in the U.S. as Rockin' Cats. And you are a cat with a boxing, like a punch glove on a spring. And you can use that to fight enemies. And you can use it to swing like a grappling hook. And it's a totally silly side-scrolling platformer from Atlas. Um, I remember Nintendo Power when I was a kid being so excited about rocking cats, but never actually picked the game up. And now it's stupid expensive. The Famicom version is not so expensive, but it's still getting a little bit up there. Um, this one, this is uh, one of the harder to find games in this box for sure. Here we got Astro Fang. Could not tell you what this game is. So let's find out. Astro Fang, Famicom, A-Wave, I haven't even heard the company that made it. Wait, Astro Fang is a behind-the-car racer? Car racing shooter game. Oh, this is not what I expected to see. The RS-121 planet used to be home of a prosperous and flourishing advanced civilization. However, a string of disasters horrifically transformed the planet and turned it into a devastated and barren wasteland. Huh. Okay. This one is going to go into my weird games to check out pile. <laughs> For absolutely sure. All right. We're coming to the last little bit here. Before we hit the last few Famicom games, there's a few more non-Famicom things in this box to pull out just for fun. Oh, haha, I remember ordering this. This was fun. So, I've recently been kind of into getting little uh, figurines for my shelves, and you can kind of see back behind me here, uh, it's hard to see in that resolution, but um, we've got a bunch of like Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy X, a bunch of just little figures. And one section over there off camera, I've got a bunch of Dragon Quest slimes. And this one is a little babble to go along with my Dragon Quest slimes. A little green transparent plastic. That's fun. All right. A few other things that aren't Famicom. 
we have grab those two first. So these are two Shin Megami Tensei Devil Children Game Boy games. So these, this was kind of um, Atlas's take on Pokemon, taking the Shin Megami Tensei series and doing a more kind of kid-friendly, gotta collect them all sort of RPGs out of them. <clears throat> then we've got the Game Boy Color port of Dragon Quest Three. <clears throat> And we have, because I'm kind of love to dive into game history and RPG history, I've got Dragon Slayer and Dragon Slayer Gaiden. Dragon Slayer being the first ever action RPG. This is, of course, a Game Boy port of that. And then Dragon Slayer Gaiden, which is like a modernized, modernized for 1992, uh, take on Dragon Slayer. So this is from uh, Nihon Falcom, same company that did the East series, um, and yeah, it's. Uh, I hear they're not great games, but historically they're very interesting. So I'm interested to check them out. All right, we are down to the last nine Famicom games in the set. Yes, this has been an epic haul. Uh, definitely. Um, I will get a whole lot more enjoyment out of this than I would have got out of a, having a box of Magic the Gathering cards in the closet. And the amazing thing is, this is only a third of the Magic cards that I have traded into this shop. I am still waiting to get the um, estimates on the rest of them. But definitely, those Magic cards are going to help me beef up this Famicom collection real fast, which is great you know if i'm gonna sell off a collectible i might as well get the collectibles i want out of it so this is interesting so first i'm just going to comment that it looks like somebody whited out part of this label and probably because they drew on it with blue marker but the whiteout looks even sillier than the blue marker would have that's nice of them <clears throat> so this is dodge done pay two so um, the original Dodge Danpei I already have on the shelf over here. So fun to have the sequel to go along with it. These games are really intriguing. These are late Famicom, 1993. So Super Famicom had been out for years by this point. Um, but the Dodge Danpei series are dodgeball RPGs. With um, But even like the dodgeball, you kind of expect, oh, that's an RPG, but the combat is like an action game of dodgeball. No, the dodgeball is played like a card battle mechanic.